Welcome to our lecture about the work and work energy theorem. Okay, we've talked about forces, we've talked about kinematics. Now we're going to start talking about energy a little bit. And the first thing we talk about with regards to energy is work. Okay, work is done whenever a force is applied over a distance. Okay, however, the force and the distance must share a component. Okay, let's look at, look at a couple examples of what I'm talking about here. Let's say we have a wagon. Okay, everybody loves the old wagon problem. You got a wagon. And we know with wagons that we have a force applied at an angle. Okay, so like the pull on the handle is at an angle. But we know the wagons are going to travel across horizontal distances. Okay, so here's our distance here. I'm going to label this just as dx. That's where we're going here. All right? We know that in order for work to be done, that they must share a component. So if we were to look at this, which component of the force is going to cause work to be done? Of course, the horizontal component of the force, the Fx, or the Fax, if we call that Fa. Right? So in order to find that work done, we have to find the horizontal component of the force and multiply it times the distance. This leads us into our equation for work, and that's that work equals force times distance. I like to put work in the x direction equals force in the x direction times distance in the x direction. Okay, just to remind you that they must share a common component. All right, if we're talking about the y direction, you say work in the y direction equals the force in the y direction times the distance in the y direction. Say we have work done along an incline. We say work done along the incline equals the force applied along the incline times the distance along the incline. Okay, so we're looking, you know, when we talk about work done, the force and the distance must share a component. The next thing we need to discuss is the unit. Okay, this is a unit that you've seen before. It's another one of our derived units based on the SI system, and that's the unit of a joule. Okay, if we know that work equals force times distance, and we know that force is measured in newtons, distance is measured in meters, one newton meter is equal to one joule. I know that's a term you're familiar with from chemistry, and before you talk about calories and joules in terms of uh, thermochemistry, but here we're looking at it in terms of the work done. Okay, so a joule, probably didn't discuss this before, is equal to a newton times a meter. So that's the unit that we'll be using for work. Okay, so work is done whenever a force is applied over a distance, but they must share a component. Okay. The work energy theorem describes what happens to objects when work is done to it. Okay? It says that whenever work, whenever there's net work done on an object, the kinetic energy of the object will change. Alright? So if we say that, we say that the work done, net work, equals delta Ke. Okay, change in kinetic energy. We know that delta just means final minus initial. So this is going to be Ke final minus Ke initial. Okay, so now we need to discuss what is kinetic energy. We'll talk about this a little bit more in depth toward the end of the week next week, but kinetic energy, our equation of kinetic energy, and you've seen this before when you took physical science, is equal to one-half an object mass times its velocity squared. So Ke equals one-half mv squared. Okay, so that's the equation that you'll use. And so in your final and initial positions, if the mass doesn't change, which 99.9% .9 of the time is not, you'll have the final velocity and your initial velocity in that equation. All right? the, the sign of work. If the work done on an object is positive, the object will speed up. Okay? So if we're saying work equals delta Ke net work, okay? and if the work is positive, then that tells you that Ke final is greater than Ke initial. Okay, so there's our equation there. If it's negative, the object will slow down. We know that negative then lets us know that Ke final must be less than Ke initial. Okay, so if we have a positive work done, that means that our object's final kinetic energy is greater than its initial kinetic energy. And if we have negative work done, that means that the object's final kinetic energy is less than the object's initial kinetic energy. What if the net work on an object is zero? 
Exactly. That means that KE final is equal to KE initial, and there's no change in the object's kinetic energy. Okay, that makes perfect sense to us. We've talked about network before, net forces before. And if the net force on an object is zero, then we know that its acceleration is zero. Same idea here. If the network is zero, then the change in kinetic energy is also going to be zero. Let's look at a real quick example, just so we have a better idea of what's going on here. A two kilogram ball falls from a height of six meters to the ground. What is the work done to the ball by gravity? So if we look at our little free body diagram here of a ball falling, we know the only force acting on it downward is the force of gravity. Okay? Force of gravity we know, just like always, equals mass times gravity. In this case, we have a height, a delta y. We'll just call that d of six meters. And we want to know how much work is done. Okay? Because the distance and the force share a component, they're in the same direction, we can just simply multiply the force times the distance to get the work done. So work equals force times distance. In this case, it's the work in the y direction equals the force applied in the y direction times the distance in the y direction. So we'll say work done is the force, which is going to be 2 kilograms times g times 6 meters. So we'll plug that in our calculator. And we will get that 2 times 9.8 times 6 gives us a value of 117.6 joules. Okay, Kilograms times the meters per second squared in the G gives you the newtons. Newtons times meters gives you the joules. Okay, so real straightforward there. Second part, what's the energy, or what's the change in the kinetic energy of the ball? Well, this is pretty straightforward. We know that work equals the change in kinetic energy. So if the kinetic energy is, or the work done is 117.6 joules, then you know that's the change in the kinetic energy. Okay, not real difficult there at all. And then the last question says, what's the final speed of the ball? Well, if it's dropped, which I didn't specify an initial velocity, so we can probably make a good assumption that it's dropped, we can determine what the final speed of our ball is. All right, so if we say 117.6 joules equals delta Ke, so 1 half mvf squared minus 1 half mv naught squared, Okay, so that's our final kinetic energy here, minus our initial kinetic energy here. If we're going to say that it's dropped, we know this whole term then goes to zero because V-naught is zero. And now we want to plug in and simply solve for our VF. So we'll say 117.6 joules equals one-half times two kilograms times VF squared. So one-half times two, that gives us one. And if we divide joules by one kilogram, that gives us 117.6 meters squared per second squared, which is where we want it to be. And then we have to just simply take the square root of it. And we get the final velocity of our ball as it strikes the ground is 10.84 meters per second. All right, so the question you probably have in your head is, why don't I just use kinematics? Well, you could use kinematics, okay, but this would involve some different steps um, I think the using work energy theorem is a little bit clearer. Okay, the only thing that's different that you might want to use kinematics for is if you don't have the time. All right, that's usually a good rule of thumb. If you don't need to find time, use work and energy. It's pretty. It's a little bit simpler for us to do. Okay, so this is our, just our introduction here to work and energy. We'll get into it a little bit more coming up over the next week. But make sure that you have this. If you've thought about these ideas of work and the work energy theorem. Thanks.